Hello and welcome. I'm Kerry Illinumi. This is a NoSpinNewsSource.com monthly report for October 2015. It's been an action-packed summer in politics, in economics, across the globe, in the United States, and here in the Pacific Northwest in Washington State, which I'm so proud to live and reside. It's been pretty uh, exciting. I got to hang out with what would be uh, a very famous known band, the multi-platinum selling band Sublime last month with their new tour in Seattle as you've got to see what would be the picture here and then uh, well it's been exciting all around like I said there's even a scandal brewing that's right well in politics if someone's not attacking you or making up something about you I guess you're not making a, much of an impact so they say so uh, some opponents and folks that don't like me decided to come up with something on their behalf and uh, it's pretty interesting they decided to say that I allegedly abused my dog or something. They said it was like neglect and, and this is and that. But they created, uh, ultimately, long story short, believe it or not, they created what would be a petition uh, based upon fabrication uh, and lies uh, stating that I have a dog that's been on a chain for consecutively five years straight, 24-7. That's the exact quote, literally. And another quote in the petition is, quote, has never had human interaction. Now, Folks, if you want to tell a lie about somebody or make someone look bad, when you stretch something like that, before we go on and elaborate and show you the video on Q13 Seattle Fox News and, and whatnot and, and discuss this more in detail and, and uh, the article that's even shown in the UK, which is kind of funny, I'm not even sure if what would be Ted Bundy or Charles Manson case back in the 70s, those psycho killers, I'm not even sure if, if their case at the time when it was relevant and live uh, was discussed over in the UK, but this issue with the dog is being discussed. So it's kind of funny. But anyway, it, it's kind of sad and pathetic, but the, the stuff they come up with and, and whatnot, and I've seen it happen to other political people and whatnot, uh, and even worse things happen to, to folks uh, when it comes to trying to smear their reputation or make them look bad. But ultimately, um, like I said, so they stated they do show what would be real pictures of what would be a dog that I do possess. Uh, he does have a, a cone that he has to wear full time under the circumstances because he has what would be an untreatable skin condition. And we've tried Atopica and lots of things and whatnot. And, and uh, we're going to be <laughs> trying a few more things here, I guess, uh, as everything we've tried over the years. But uh, long story short, like I said, so you'll have to check out this video uh, and whatnot. But the individual that created this petition against me, as you'll notice in a moment, she won't even show her face on film. So even though she says that I'm the bad guy, she says for fear of repercussions, she can't show her face. So either I'm a mob guy, like a bad guy, uh, so she's scared to say something about me, or it's because obviously, once again, it's fabricated and whatnot. So this lady went as far, not just making quotes like never had human interaction, which could obviously be proven false. I mean, how the hell does a poor thing eat? I mean, you know, I mean, really. But, um, but also, I mean, a, a guy like me wouldn't be smart enough to know what I know politically and economically get ready to run for Congress in three years against Rick Larson and then yet be dumb enough to have a dog that's being abused on a chain living next to a major artery road to where people could see that would just be I mean there's dumb and then there's dumber so I wouldn't be stupid I mean I'd be putting a rope around myself and hanging my own self out to dry literally if I was dumb enough to do something like that especially being the controversial political guy that I am that would be, you know, an easy way to make someone tarnish their reputation if I was silly enough to do something as such. So obviously I'm, in, I'm innocent, uh, but nonetheless, these folks, like I stated, to go on, they even went further. They stated that the city is lying, <laughs> believe it or not, that the city lies and they're not enforcing the laws and I never provided any uh, documentation at all none they stated from a veterinarian and all this stuff so I mean they, like I said these people I mean they're stretching the truth and then they're stretching the truth I mean these people are getting pretty desperate so long story short uh, if you go to the Arlington uh, Washington City Council website and whatnot for City Hall you can actually hear a speech and whatnot in which I got to talk right to the face of these people on the record before the mayor city council members police and everybody and put them in their place there's also what will be an article in the Arlington Times out right now as I'm on the front page regarding this and some of the quotes and statements that I made uh, as well 
Uh, so it's funny that we're talking all about dogs and, uh, and whatnot, but it's, it's nice to be able to put this out and then to show and then discuss this from my point of view. Now, ultimately, as I stated, this, this required about 14,500 signatures from around the globe. It got heated, moving pretty quick, actually. Had uh, uh, people throwing this big protest and Fox News out there and this is and that. But after people discovered that this is based upon fabrication and lies, and this lady couldn't back it up, as people began to say, well, thank you for creating this petition against this alleged dog abuser. But how do you know? Shannon O'Quist, which is her name, from the Headless Horseman that you'll see here in a moment. Her name is Shannon O'Quist. So to put a name to the face that you won't see here in a moment, that's who created the petition. Um, well, ultimately, this is the factor that we have right here. So uh, when she was asked and put on the spot by folks online, well, how do you know that the city is lying, that he hasn't provided this evidence or whatever, she obviously, she drops out of the conversation because she doesn't have that substance. So I have what would be, obviously, as the chief of police told me on the phone, if, uh, the, if I was breaking the law and, and whatnot under the circumstances and the dog was being abused, he, the dog would have been taken away a long time ago. That was an exact quote. So check out this video. We'll catch you back on the other side, and thank you. A heated conversation is brewing in Arlington tonight over the laws surrounding the treatment of animals. One dog in particular has the attention of thousands who are rallying online. They feel it's being neglected by its owner, and they want the city to step in. I usually cry every time I drive by that house. I've cried many nights thinking about that dog. This black lab, known as Blaze, is at the center of a growing debate in Arlington. No animal should be tied to a tree with a cone around his neck for five years. This woman has asked us to hide her identity out of fear of retaliation. She's heading up a petition already 1,500 strong, demanding the city step in, unhappy with the care the dog receives from its owner, who lives in the home just feet away from the tree where Blaze is forced to spend much of his time. He's not um, tied up 24-7, um, and the cone is on there to keep him from hurting himself further uh, with his allergic condition. The city of Arlington says no laws are being broken here, including the tethering law, which states access to food and water, as long as they have access to shelter, and as long as they have room to be able to maneuver around so it doesn't cause them any injury. Uh, and that's what we have in this case. The city also says they've documented dozens of 911 calls from people concerned about the dog, dating back to 2012. The dog is uh, well fed, has adequate water and access to that, also has a shelter out there, has a dog house that he's able to get uh, easily get access to. The city says Blaze's owner has provided officers documentation from a vet ordering he wear that cone, which protects him from scratching himself when his skin allergy flares up. The dog is in a healthy condition, and while it's not ideal, for a dog to live like that, that is acceptable under the law. Some say the current law just isn't enough, and what they're seeing just isn't right. My biggest fear is that, as has happened in the past, nothing's going to happen and that dog will die laying on the ground alone. Now, we made several attempts to contact the dog's owner, but have yet to hear back. While no laws are being broken, the city says they are researching tethering laws in other cities and states around the U.S. in the hopes of narrowing the current local law. The council will likely address the topic in a few weeks. And thanks for sticking with the show. As you can see, things are really going to the dogs here in the Pacific Northwest near Seattle. So, anyways, moving onward. Uh... Yeah, actually moving onward. So NASA found water on Mars. They have designs for a 3D printed Mars base as well, which has been unveiled for potentially one of the uh, versions. Uh, Speaker of the House John Boehner will resign from Congress. That's right, he's stepping down, stepping out of the way. Not just as Speaker, he is resigning completely. This is major, this is big, big news. Things are happening. It's moving. You're going to see a bunch of people get replaced in 2016 and a bunch more over 2018 and 2020. Uh, it's going to be a major reshaping here in America. It's going to be beautiful. So um, here we go. Secretary of State uh, John Kerry warns that the U.S. and Russia may clash in Syria. Uh, child cancer event was shut down outside the White House by Secret Service. 
Secretary of State uh, John Kerry also stated that U.S. to take up 80, up to 85,000 refugees next year. Now this is interesting because we've started a real mess in Syria and other places throughout the world regarding ISIS and, and whatnot, how we've handled this event and how we haven't been very successful in the campaigns, air raids and things that we've done uh, and whatnot and have seemed to make things worse. Uh, so we've heard Assad must go, Assad must go, President Assad of Syria must go. Well. We don't have a right to say this about other countries or whatnot. Assad has never been a threat or a problem to us economically or anything else. And uh, there are some people that want to actually build a pipeline of, from Saudi Arabia, gas pipeline up through Saudi Arabia, bypassing Russia. So you're having a real clash in situation where you have the Saudis want to take over the Russian uh, supply, uh, what would be, not Russian supply, but what would be uh, take over supplying uh, Europe and places of what would be otherwise done by Russia. So the Saudis want to make that dime and uh, we see what happens. It's all about oil, gas, this is and that, uh, economies and whatever else. So, so this is a very interesting situation as now we see it uh, boiling over. The Pentagon updates plans uh, now uh, for war with potentially aggressive Russia, quote, Unquote. Uh, Robert Reich, uh, which is a major advisor for the Hillary Clinton uh, whatnot, uh, stated, quote, that Hillary is making a, quote, a big mistake, unquote, by not reinstating the Glass-Steagall Act. And that's a, a Ceylon.com article. And uh, I do agree with him. And this here shows that she really is with the corporate interest of Wall Street, where she states that Hillary Clinton states about income inequality and justice and uh, whatnot and, and all that stuff and, and people having a fair chance and equal opportunities. That lady is a lying piece of crap. And I don't have to be sexist to say that. I just have to be realistic. I know what Hillary Clinton is and I'm gonna say something right here on the record. Hillary Clinton already. First of all, Howard Dean is already now campaigning and part of the Hillary Clinton camp. That's right, former governor and former what would be uh, head of what would be the Democratic National Party chair, Howard Dean himself, we're seeing. Uh, and so instead of going with what would be uh, uh, Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders, which is also of Vermont, you see the current governor and former governor, what would be of Vermont, going with Hillary, automatically bypassing and ultimately saying no to Bernie. Uh, so this is interesting. Hillary Camp already claims to have 20% of the electorate votes needed to secure her nomination for what would be the Democratic Party, according to a New York Times article. And if that is accurate, if that's not just bluff, if that is true, she has 20% of the electorate votes already in the bag. Wow. Here it comes, baby. It's going to be potent. Now, uh, ISIS leader admits to being funded by the United States. That's right. I said it here year, two years ago. Jeb Bush states, my brother, quote, kept us safe, unquote. Kept us safe. Yeah, I feel it. Uh, president Obama has nominated Hillary Clinton for our next president. And following that, two days later, our Congressman Rick Larson of Washington State, the second district, he stated that he supports Hillary Clinton as well. So once again, everybody is coming out of the woodwork. Some people are saying, no, Hillary's not gonna get it. The email thing's gonna keep her from it. Don't kid yourself, folks. Don't kid yourself. I know how politics and things work. I'm up at a much higher level of consciousness. I understand what's going on. How do I always seem to know what's going on and forecast and say big things that are happening months and even three, four, five years ahead, seven years ahead of the trends at times. How do I do that? My forecasting and stuff, it's simple. If you're down at the ground level, the first level story of a building, looking out over the town, you're not gonna see much. You're up on top of the Seattle Space Needle, looking out over the city, you're gonna have a much more larger perspective and view of what would be reality and what's going on. That's my perception. I have did the math, I have did the research. I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not, I'm not a, a party political player at all. I don't care about political party, I care about the truth. So I've never got in bed with political money interest or anybody else. I've kept it true, I've kept it straight, 
I've always kept my opinions and bias out of it. I never really had an opinion. I just say, okay, what's going on in politics? What's the truth? Let's dig into it and find out. That's my perception of what is reality. That's how I uh, perceive it, and that's how I approach any task, any case, any forecast, any new news story. I listen to all perspectives and all angles and moving onward. So NASA delays the first manned flight for its Mars spacecraft until 2023. Uh, the Watts WhatsApp security bug exposed 200 million users to hackers. Whiskey matured in space uh, taste uh, and not uh, noticeably different, uh, unquote. I guess it has some different chemical constituent variables uh, which are pretty interesting if I should say so. Uh, there's also some information here on what would be uh, well, before we move any further, let's talk about ISIS, Russia, Syria, and what's really going on. Well, we just had what would be here at the end of September, just a few days ago, we had President of Russia, Putin. We had what would be uh, presidents and world leaders from all around the world at the UN summit in New York City. It was a huge event. Obama was there. Uh, Netanyahu uh, was there uh, uh, from... Uh, and whatnot. So all these people from all from Israel and, and all these people were there uh, and whatnot to discuss the world situation, the forum and circumstances. And so you need to be aware of these variables to really understand the full picture of what's going on, where Russia comes into play, what they're trying to accomplish, and what the United States is doing in Syria to begin with. So we've seen a little bit of a change in gameplay where the United States has stated Assad must go, Assad must go, Assad must go. Now Russia's coming into the equation and their United States and certain Western interests are beginning to flinch because now all of a sudden with the Russia situation there, it's not just a one-sided street. And this will be the potential for, it could be a clash for world war or anything as well regarding this set of circumstances. Uh, if the United States decides that we don't like how Russia and things are panning out and playing out and Russia decides we're, they're not going to allow us to assassinate President Assad, it may come down to some pretty hot friction uh, and whatnot. Uh, uh, and it will be very interesting to see what happens or if President Assad's killed but we have a, a struggle between the nations and deciding that uh, you know, Russia may not allow that pipeline to still go through there because maybe President Assad will make some agreements. Even if he's dead, he's still stating as the president, as the ruler of that country and him and his family, rightful rulers type thing that uh, democrat democratically elected at that, that ultimately you know, it may state uh, something behind the scenes and I'm just speculating and I don't know what will happen there. But you need to see this video, check this out and we'll catch you back after this. Thank you so much. And welcome back to the NoSpinNewsSource.com monthly report. Once again, I'm your host, Kerry Lanumi. This is October 2015. You can also catch us on Facebook and what would be uh, Twitter on Facebook. It's Kerry, K-A-R-I, Ilanumi, I-L-O-N-U-M-M-I of, once again, NoSpinNewsSource.com on Twitter at Illinumi, I-L-O-N-U-M-M-I, carry as well. Now, here we are, getting toward the end of the show. Now you see a bigger picture of ISIS, what's going on. You even got to hear about Blaze the Dog, that's famous. Well, here we go. There's a source, what would be uh, stated, that the White House has an FBI task force investigating Infowars.com, owned and created by Alex Jones from Austin, Texas. The Obama White House has directed an FBI task force, according to this, um, to put Alex Jones and the Infowars operation under surveillance in anticipation of a potential raid, a source Alex Jones told a few days ago. Obama plans to shut down news organization. Around a year ago, Alex Jones was first contacted by a source within the FBI who informed him that Infowars.com was being kept under close surveillance by the federal government. Another well-placed source contacted Mr. Jones yesterday to tell him that an FBI task force was in Washington, D.C., was now specifically dedicated to targeting Alex Jones and the InfoWars operation and was preparing to launch a search and seizure raid once a pretext could be contrived. 
Meetings have already taken place where FBI agents have already expressed their confidence that they will find something with which to go after Jones, even if it means framing the radio host. The source has already come out and stated, quote, they are very confident that they can raid this facility and make up something, said Jones. Quote, real people in the FBI continue to contact me to say this is coming. This is being done. Be ready, unquote, according to Alex Jones. In the light of the Lewis Lerner scandal, where conservative groups were deliberately targeted by the IRS, the feds are keen to not make the process look like political persecution. So they uh, likely uh, are to have it uh, spearheaded by the Federal Trade Commission and be related to InfoWars' sale of health supplements, according to Alex Jones. This would not be the first time that Alex Jones has been touted as a target of the Obama White House. Let's go on here. Let's make sure we put this on the record, give this man justice and whatnot where it's due. 2009, after Alex Jones released his viral documentary, The Obama Deception, the Globe published an Obama enemies list that included Alex Jones's name. Last year, author and documentary filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza was sentenced to five years of probation, including eight months in community confinement center for making an illegal campaign contribution by having other people give money to Republican Wendy Long and reimbursing their donations. This sentence was described as an act of, quote, political persecution, unquote by many who pointed out that Democrats get away with the same behavior on a regular basis. Back in 2007, Dallas Mavericks Mark Cuban was also threatened by the FTC for his involvement in a controversial political documentary on the basis that it might embarrass the White House. Now here we go, folks. We're at the point now when even news journalism, like what I'm doing out here in the middle of the Cascade Mountains, and next month it'll be back at the studio, it's getting to the point now when it's getting dangerous and risky for people like myself to tell you the truth. It's getting risky. There are people threatening us, threatening our lives, our liberty, our futures. Alex Jones, he's been threatened, I've been threatened. My house got bugged last year after I went on vacation. I came back from Portland, Oregon and Seaside and whatnot and my place was bugged. I mean, what's the, co what's the coincidence that my house got bugged when I was on vacation? And whoever these people knew uh, were, they obviously knew I was on vacation. They knew by my credit card statements and things and whatnot, I would assume, uh, and whatnot. So, and I didn't make that public. I didn't even tell friends and people I was going on that vacation. That was kind of a spare of the moment. I just kind of disappeared. Nobody knew where I was for several days. Well, apparently some people did know where I was. And somebody that was at my home found the bug a few days after I came back. So, it's getting hot and heavy, folks. There's a reason why people like me are pretty paranoid and whatnot and, and are a little bit cautious of who we spend our time with. It's because it's hard to trust people in, in this line of work in politics and economics. But folks like myself of NoSpendNewSource.com, folks, and I'll go on a whim, like even Alex Jones, does mean well, and he's trying to provide you with the news and he's risking his butt and everything as well. So. Please take that into consideration, folks. So we're going to provide you with some Second Amendment action and show you myself shooting the gun, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, God bless, and see you next month. That's Charlie. Charlie's a bad guy. He's about 50 feet away. I'm going to shoot him with my AK-47 rifle. Let's find out what my target practice quality is. And then we'll take a look at Charlie afterward. Oh, Charlie's already. Oh, looks like he's had one or two too many drinks. He's had a little bit of too much vodka. We partied hard last night. Hold on here. Hold on here. We're going to bring Charlie back to life. One second. Charlie, you can't have my wallet. You just can't. Sorry, Charlie.
some headshots. I'm trying to hit that heart. Here's a heart one. Not bad at all. No, it wasn't.